I thought it was really cool uh, how this congregation, when we have the, the, the things we're thankful for right at the beginning, how you always applaud people for graduating from school or uh, having some award or whatever, and how you applauded Rick this morning. And uh, I'd like to continue this just a little bit. What a great song for communion, huh? What a great song. Let's give John a hand. I like that finger in the air. That's good. <laughs> if, if you'll take out your worship message today, this whole worship message is a parable. And as we get closer to the end, you'll see how it's a parable. Jesus told a lot of stories, and one of the reasons he did was because you remember stories. Uh, it's like sitting around a campfire, you know, near a kid, you know, somebody tells an especially good story, you remember that the rest of your life. And the disciples and all the people who heard Jesus remembered these parables or these stories all his life. So this is the parable of Diane Barton's recipe. <laughs> and, and, and you're going to remember. You may not remember exactly all the ingredients in the recipe, but you'll, re you'll remember the teaching point because you remember the story. And so the theme of this passage that we're working on today is work with me. Jesus said, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Well, what does work with Jesus mean? Remember, all these things that Jesus is saying here in, in Matthew eleven twenty-eight through 30, they're, they're gentle in commandments. They're gentle encouragements for us to work with Jesus. So what does it mean when he gently encourages us to work with him? Well, believe it or not, if, if you're sitting here today, you're already doing that. But my desire is to just encourage myself and encourage you to even be more aware of everything you and I do is working with Jesus and for Jesus, if we're a Christian, virtually everything we do. So every single follower of God will work for Jesus in a slightly different way. Not one person among us, if there were a thousand people here, a million people here, not one of us would be working for Jesus exactly the same way as the other people. And that is incredibly important. You know, I raised cattle for years, and I would always get hybrid vigor. I made sure that my, my cattle, I would raise, uh, I'd have Hereford cows, and I'd always get milking shorthorn bulls because the offspring of two different breeds of cattle have what's called hybrid vigor. And one of the interesting little footnotes of American history that never appears in your history books is, one reason we're such a dynamic society is a lot of us have Native American history. A lot of us uh, have English, Irish, Scottish, French, and a whole bunch of other nationalities. And 90% and of all, well, 95% of all African American have Caucasian. And literally 30% uh, of all white people have, have African uh, heritage if you do the DNA test. So one of the strengths of this country is we got hybrid vigor. And hybrid vigor means not only are you physically more aware of things and stronger and grow faster and are more vigorous and don't get sick, hybrid vigor also means that you're mentally sharper. So uh, our country's blessed with this hybrid vigor and hybrid vigor is what the church is all about. We need other Christians. And it's what our South Brown County Ministerial Alliance is all about. We need Catholics and Independents and Methodists and Baptists and Presbyterians and Lutherans. We just, 
we just need each other very badly, more badly than we realize, because they'll have ideas about following Jesus that we won't have. We will have ways of following Jesus that they don't have. So every single follower of God and every single church works for God in a slightly different way because we're all trying to be followers of Jesus. For some, it's a ministry of hospitality or work at the food pantry, helping feed the poor and underemployed of South Brown County. Many people have jobs, but they're underemployed. They're just barely making it. Uh, teaching about Jesus' life is what our Sunday school teachers do, our pastors do, our elders do. So that's a work for some people. Everybody has a special gift. Now the way to know your special gift is to ask yourself the question. Two questions, really. What am I good at doing? And the second question is, what do I really enjoy? If you're a follower of Jesus, God is not going to ask you to do something you really don't like. God has given each of us natural things that we enjoy, and he'll give you something that you really will enjoy. And you know, the things we really enjoy are the things that we tend to be good at. Uh, when I teach at Highland Community College, I always ask all my students, what, what, what are you thinking about having as your major? And uh, many of them will rattle off three or four different fields that they're sort of interested in. I said, well, you know, as you take class after class, you'll finally figure out what interests you the most. Let me strongly encourage you to major in something that you really enjoy. Because if you major in something you really enjoy, you'll do well in that subject. And I know, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed with preschool children, if they have a teacher they really like who can inspire them, even if they've not been a, that great a student, when they hit that teacher's class, they start learning logarithmically all kinds of really health, helpful things because that teacher is inspiring them. So God is asking you not to do terrible things that you, that you really dislike. God is always, as a general rule, there's some exceptions, is going to ask you, do things for God's work. Work with Jesus at things you really enjoy. We have people here that are gifted at, at cooking. Uh, we have people here that, that are gifted with the ability to fix things. All of us need each other. We have people here that have very wise counsel and have a lot of wisdom. So what am I good at doing? What do I really enjoy? And, and that's probably going to be what the kingdom of God work your whole lifetime will be, things that you enjoy. Uh, in the most unusual places, I won't go into all the details, in the most unusual places this last week, I spoke with a draftsman. And he enjoys designing buildings with solid foundations. <clears throat> and he talked for some time about how important foundations were. And, and he, really, he really got into it. Well, if you've ever been in Alma, Kansas, where the, a lot of German stone masons build these beautiful buildings out of uh, Kansas limestone, you can see which one of those masons believed in strong foundations. Because some of those Buildings don't have a single crack in them. It's clear that that stone foundation is right on the bedrock. But some of those other uh, stone buildings in Kansas, although in, in, in Alma, although they're, they're beautiful stone buildings, their foundation isn't too good. So over 50 or 100 or 150 years, the building has settled, and foundations are very, very important. And this, this man, that's his gift. He's a draftsman. He works on blueprints of houses and buildings. That's his gift, and that's his honest work. And he was really inspiring to listen to as he talked about solid foundations when he designed buildings. Some of us raise cattle, raise crops. I don't know hardly any ranchers that raise cattle that don't enjoy it. Uh, I know some farmers that don't enjoy it too much because the hours are so long when you're harvesting and when you're planting and when you're fertilizing. But still, many farmers enjoy raising crops. 
Raising children is not always the easiest thing. It's also one of the most wonderful things in the world. And raising grandchildren. Uh, people that love kids will put up with all the kids stuff. People that love kids will put up with all the grandkids stuff and they're good parents and good grandparents. So singing like Kith and Ken did last Sunday with their praise songs, wasn't that wonderful? And uh, I put a note on Facebook, on our Facebook page for the church, thanking everybody for financially supporting them so much while they were here and for giving them such a great offering. Uh, and I hope they can come back uh, relatively soon and, and praise God with us again. It's just wonderful to see young people praising God and, and singing songs like we just applauded John uh, for uh, up on the screen. So we all need each other's work to help us be balanced followers of Jesus. It's so easy for us as human beings to become unbalanced, and we'll want to follow Paul or Peter or Apollos or some human being. You know, the danger of some of these really famous people on television that are great Christian leaders is that we'll worship Joel Osteen, you know, or we'll worship Billy Graham, or we'll only think the thoughts that Joyce Meyer says on television, and all those those three people that have one of T.D. Jakes is another one. Uh, they all have real important insights into the kingdom of God that are different than each other, but the danger is we, only, we just worship one of them. And, and the only person we really need to worship is Jesus. We need to be a follower of Jesus and utilize Paul, Peter, Apollos, Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, and people like that to help us follow Jesus but we need, we need to have a cross-fertilization over a much wider span of, of Christians. Uh, I hope you listened to all kinds of Christian music on your, on your radio. Uh, that will give you a wide span. Of, I hope you listen to religious broadcasts where people of different denominations are speaking on television and on radio. Uh, now for the parable. Diane Barton and her famous white Shelley. Uh, she's back there shaking her head at me. <laughs> this is a classic example of why we need a lot of different things. Um, we had some type of a church dinner, and Diane made, the only way I can describe it is drop dead, really good. A, a, friend of, a family friend of mine says, to die for white Shelley. <laughs> And uh, it was incredible. I went back and got seconds, and it was incredible. So I asked Diane for the recipe, and I, I, she gave it to me one time as a church, so I kept it in my Bible for a few weeks. And then it came my turn to cook, would you believe I served white chili for breakfast? Um, to cook breakfast for the men's group in Grace Cathedral that I go to every Thursday morning. So I, I was scared. I had never cooked this stuff before. And I was going to alter the recipe a little bit. I'll tell you how I altered it. But uh, I basically followed Diane's recipe. And uh, it had a lot of different ingredients. You had to, and then you had to simmer these ingredients for eight hours. Well, when I first started simmering it, I put it too high. And I'm sure Kathleen smelled the... The cream cheese started burning, you know, but I caught it in time. And <laughs> so it's a real low simmer on this. And uh, I'll give you Diane's recipe uh, if you ask me for it later on. But this is not a commercial message. This is mainly a parable about how we need all these different things. So it called for, it, it, it called for chicken as the meat in it. So I got several chicken uh, breasts, and I fried them in curry, uh, fried them in olive oil and curry, and then it calls shredding. Have you ever tried to shred a chicken breast? That's a lot of work. I was banging away at those chicken breasts for quite a while. I had a wooden spoon, Diane. <laughs> a fork and a wooden spoon just lobbing off chunks of chicken. 
Uh, but then you, you hold the chicken till the end, and you take cream cheese, black beans, full kernel corn, and I added, uh, you get these cans of chicken breasts, I added a, a can of, of chicken breast, broke it up, and the, the juice from that's really good. I also added something too, I or added a, a couple of cups of cooked brown rice, and uh, I forgot to tell you this, Diane. I also added uh, cream of chicken soup to it, too, and, and thinned it out. And then I let it cook. Oh, and, and 32 ounces, I doubled the recipe, so 32 ounces of green chili. And I, I upped her amount of cream cheese. So much so that it couldn't dissolve <laughs> in hours of simmering, you know. So um, I thought it tasted pretty good, but I was still scared, you know, because I had never served this before. So uh, I, I baby that stuff for several hours that night and kept stirring it, you know, and. Uh, I went to the store and actually got more ba black beans and more corn because I got to count in the number of men. If there was 25 or 30, I'd have been in trouble, you know. So I, I upped it. And when I, when I served it, you know, it was, I could tell it, you know, when's the last time you had white chili for breakfast, you know? <laughs> and I got the kind of donuts that I really like, uh, sour, sour, uh, sourdough donuts. And, and, and that, that was breakfast and coffee. And these guys, these are fairly sophisticated guys at Grace Cathedral, you know, so they were raising their eyebrows, let's put it that way. But once they had one spoon in their mouth, you could tell it was just pure delight, you know. So I thought, well, this is going better than I thought, you know. The, the secret, though, the teaching point of this is all these different ingredients the green chili, the corn, the whole corn, and then you pour the juice of the whole corn in, the black beans, the shredded chicken, which you add just at the last, towards the end, all that cream cheese, the cream of chicken soup, and the canned chicken with the really pungent good taste. All those things were important to make it what it was. You are all... Every one of you here, you're really important to the kingdom of God. You may think you're not. Every one of these little ones, these three little ones here this morning, every one of them is really important to the kingdom of God, too. We're much more important to the kingdom of God. You, you may just be a little bit of curry, <laughs> a few black beans, <laughs> a couple of kernels of corn, maybe the juice from the corn, whatever you are, you're important to make this mixture. And essentially, you and I as Christians, we all simmer together. We needed kith and kin last Sunday. They help us simmer in a different kind of way. And so I made a fancy, they said, what in the world is this? This is delicious. What is this? So I made a really fancy name for it. <laughs> and the name is accurate, but it's fancy. Well, Kathleen and I just love the green chili of New Mexico. So I called it New Mexican Green Chili, Green Chicken Chili. New Mexican Green Chicken Chili. And they went back for seconds, and I had hardly enough to give a sample to Kathleen <laughs> when I got back home. So Christians need other Christians. The work you're doing in your corner of South Brown County, the work you're doing in your corner of Horton First Christian Church, just your presence here helps us simmer together. And the Holy Spirit puts us on a low cook. So we all blend, our thinking blends together. You know, even our AA group on Friday night, Freedom Friday, that's simmering together, helping us in our Christian faith. And it makes a most delicious aroma in the sight of God 
that one of us alone could never possibly make. Your work is important for the kingdom of God. We're all in this pot together. We're all simmering through life together. We desperately need each other. And God bless you for being here today and for being part of God's wonderful church that he's making that is changing the world one person at a time. Would you join with me in singing our hymn of invitation? If you'd like to commit your life to Jesus Christ, come and stand with me.